in the world of gems and jewelry. Ella and I, we just did a little video and we got into kind of some history with certain gems and stories. We were gonna talk about a gem, I think touching on moissanite. It's searched online quite a bit and we do have people that come in and ask for it, right? So I think just touching on that is, sorry. <laughs> you better be sorry. <laughs> it's, it's just really searched online. And so I thought touching on that, I've also seen online where people say like, this is a really good alternative to a diamond. It yeah. looks like a diamond, but it's cheaper and it has this cool backstory about meteorites. And I just don't know that people understand some of the other aspects of it that maybe we see because we look at gems all day long. When it comes to Moist Night, I don't, I don't hate on anything that a customer wants, to be honest. Like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that's so true. If you want a Moist Night, then, you know, I'll get you the best Moist Night. I can find, okay? I have literally had sales where I've kind of tried to talk people out of it, to be honest, because it's probably one of my least favorite stones, if I'm totally honest. We, as a jewelry store, you know, need to support what people believe is beautiful and, and help them come to that, you know? So on some level, I'll, I'll be happy to sell Moissanite. What I don't like about Moissanite is, in terms of synthetic gemstones, it's the most fake looking to me. This is a personal opinion. So when you look at a moissanite versus a diamond, a diamond is gonna reflect rainbow colors. But a moissanite is like rainbow colors on steroids. The way I would look at it is like if you're looking at a professional bodybuilder who uses steroids. Like, yeah, you're strong, but it looks a little, looks a little fake. Let's be honest, you know? And that to me is like a moissanite. It's like a diamond on massive steroids. It's the most, craziest steroided out diamond you've ever seen. And so for me, it starts to look to, I look at it and I say, it, it does look a little fake, you know? So that's what I don't like about a moissanite. Um, when I first started in the industry, they, they, were, they were very yellowish or brownish in um, color. And they've perfected that over the years to make them more white. So they're more um, palatable to me than they used to be say five or 10 years ago. Because even then they had they were yellowish and they had the crazy colors, but some people want a lot of rainbow colors. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If that's what you want, if you want a lot of sparkle and a lot of rainbow and excessive rainbow, crazy rainbow, so every light that you're in is just shot, shooting rainbows everywhere. If that's what you want, nothing wrong with that. Like more power to you. Let's do it. You know. But um, for me, I have this idea of what I like, and what I like is you know real. Diamond sparkle is what I what I truly like. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's just right uh, So it's not overwhelming and and sometimes to me a moissanite can be a little overwhelming Well, we have to be honest a moissanite's made in a lab So I don't know where meteorites come into this equation yeah. But that's where they come from. They come from a lab if you want something that looks like a diamond I would buy honestly a lab diamond if, if you're trying to get something that's very similar to a diamond look that to me is a better alternative than a moist night. However, a moist night's less expensive right now. I think that lab diamonds are gonna go down over the next five years and probably be very, very similar to moist night in pricing. Um, but as of now, yeah, they are a little less expensive than uh, a lab grown diamond. So yeah, it is, a, it is an alternative for sure. It's just, it has a different look to it. And the look, it depends on what you want. If you want a lot of rainbow sparkling color, uh, that's what you're gonna get and some people may want that. I personally think it's a little overwhelming in terms of the fire mm -hmm. and scintillation. The ones that I've seen, they, they definitely don't look like a diamond to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if that's what you're looking for, uh, that's not what I would recommend either. Alternative to a diamond that looks like a diamond, I think a moissanite overpowers that. And so when people look at it, they look at the rainbow colors and they say, wow, that's, that's crazy, that's mm -hmm. different. So it does, it has a different look is the whole point. Not something natural that has rainbow colors. Moonstone, opal. Depends on what you want if it's for a wedding ring because you know both of those will wear quickly as a as a yeah. as a wedding ring. Something that that I recommend mm -hmm. is colorless sapphire. You can also do sapphires of all different colors. We have sapphires that come out of Montana that are spectacular. Unbelievable, really pretty. Kind of purplish blue lavender, a little bit lighter. 
super like velvety, really pretty. So sapphire is a great alternative, I think, if you want something natural that's lower in price. That's great. At the very least, go into a jewelry store and say, you know, there's my price range, what are my options? Look at the labs, look at the naturals, and compare. So compare a moissanite in person with a lab diamond, with a sapphire, and have the jewelry store show you for yourself uh, so that you can see the most beautiful for you. We love doing that. I think sometimes people think that like it bothers us to show options, but we love options and we love yeah. giving people options and actually having them leave what they really want Yes. and being educated in that. So we hope everybody comes in. And that's part of the experience. Like if you're getting a wedding ring, something so important that you're going to wear every day for the rest of your life, take the time and pick out something that speaks to you. That's one thing that you don't get sometimes with the online market. Um, and even when in diamonds, there's such a difference between different diamonds, uh, even if they have the same grade. So I would recommend people always take time to just see what speaks to them. Sometimes you can't even name what specifically is speaking to, to you about a diamond. You can look at two HSI ones, both uh, excellent, triple excellent cuts, but one of them to you is just more beautiful. That's something that you, that's an experience that you want to have for a ring that you have for the rest of your life, in my opinion. Um, so obviously diamonds don't talk to us, like sp specifically use words, but for sure I've seen diamonds speak to people on so many levels and a, and a particular diamond will talk to a customer and be more beautiful. And that's something that you want for yourself and also for your ring for the rest of your life. I mean, knowing that that diamond, like this one really, it did something, you know, that the other one didn't do. And, and I chose this, I hand selected this. I mean, that's special. And then when you go and pass it down, that was a diamond that you took the time to see the beauty of, and then are able to pass it down as an heirloom to the next generation. So that's, that's just kind of a fun experience. I've experienced this as well. I'm not on the sales floor so much and I don't show diamonds very often, but the times when I have sat down with somebody, even sometimes they, they don't think that Oh, I'm going to look at one diamond and another. Like they don't, they're not expecting it to be kind of a cool, special experience, but then there is something and you, you can't always even explain it. It might not even be like the better quality diamond, but I've seen it happen and it's so cool where that's the one they want. Like that one speaks to them. Yeah. That's for their person. And then they, they leave with this, um, I guess this kind of feeling of pride and just like, yeah just something really cool like yeah i picked that one yeah. for my person that they're yeah. gonna wear for the rest of their lives and then it has that story and and that's carried with like that that whole heritage heirloom you know story as well so it's really cool and special yeah i'm glad that we get to be a part of that it's really cool there's no reason why in my opinion people shouldn't have the option of looking at five or ten different gemstones and and picking out what's best for them for their partner uh, what speaks to them, what's beautiful to them. And each of these gemstones will have a different look to it, regardless of whether or not they all have the same grades. They are different, especially when you get into the natural world. But same thing with synthetics. Synthetics are different too. There's a difference to them. Some will have a little bit more of a grayish overtone. Um, some will sparkle less than others. The sparkle itself is something you should compare with your naked eye. Uh, they are different, you know, and whether it's a lab or a natural, these are crystals that have grown, you know, through heat and pressure. And these crystals have different structures on the inside. And each of those structures on the inside are going to reflect light differently. They're also going to have a different body color. So for those reasons, uh, whether or not it's a grade that's the same, you want to take the time to look in person and see how beautiful the stone is for you. And that's the most important part.